Hey guys, welcome back. As promised, in this video, we're going to quickly discuss Flask, see how to get it installed, and make our first simple web service. So let's get to it. We briefly talked last time about how we'd be working with Flask over the next several videos, and we referred to what we'd be building as a web service. So let's elaborate on Flask now and get a little more comfortable so we can understand its role in our upcoming tasks. Technically, Flask is considered a micro framework for Python. A micro framework is just a term that describes a very minimal web application framework. And a web application framework is just software that supports development of web apps, including web services. All right, so as previously discussed, we'll be using Flask to host our web service. Our web service will be handling the HTTP requests that come in asking for predictions on images of cats and dogs from our fine-tuned VGG16 network. First things first, we need to get Flask onto our machines. To install Flask, you'll first need an environment where Python is installed. Flask currently supports Python 3.4 and later, and also Python 2.7. Installation is pretty straightforward. If you're using a Linux environment, then assuming you already have Python, from the terminal you can simply run sudo pip install flask. And if you're using a Windows environment, then from a command line window launched with admin privileges, you'll use the same command in the command line minus the sudo. So just pip install flask. And if you're using Anaconda, then from the terminal you can run conda install dash c anaconda flask all right now that we have flask installed let's test it out to make sure it works to do this we're going to write a simple web service that gives the user the message flask is running when we browse to the web service first we need to create a python file where we're going to write our code i have one called sample underscore app dot pi that i've placed in a directory i've called flask underscore apps within my home directory the first thing we're doing in this program is importing the Flask class with the line from Flask, import Flask. Next, we define the variable app to be equal to Flask, parentheses, double underscore name, double underscore parentheses. This is creating an instance of the Flask class, and the name argument with the double underscores on each side is the name of the application's module. The Flask documentation tells us to use this name like this if we're simply using a single module like we are here. Next we have at symbol app dot route parentheses the string slash sample. This app dot route prefix with the at sign is a decorator that tells Flask what URL a user has to browse to in order for the function underneath to be called. The argument we're giving it, the string sample prefix with a slash in this case, is also called an endpoint. So when someone browses to the sample endpoint, which will just be our IP address slash sample, only then will they get what we define next. Now to the function. I've named this function running, and all it does is return the string flask is running when a user browses to the sample endpoint. So that's it for what we include in the program. This is our web service. Now, we need to tell Flask which program we want to run, and then we need to start Flask. From the terminal, let's type export flask underscore app, where flask underscore app is capitalized, equals sample underscore app dot pi, or whatever name you chose to call your program. Remember, I saved mine to my flask underscore apps directory, and that's currently where I am in the terminal. If you saved yours elsewhere, then either first CD into that directory or specify the full path to your file. Now we type the command flask run dash dash host equals 0.0.0.0. This command starts flask and the host parameter specified in this way makes the web service visible and publicly available to all computers on your network. Otherwise, if you don't specify the host parameter like this, then you can only access the service from your local machine. So just make sure that you trust the users on your network before you specify the parameter like I did here. Now, we get indication that Flask is running here on port 5000, which is the default port for Flask. 
So let's see what happens when we browse to our service. If you're going to be browsing from the same machine where Flask is running, then you don't have to worry about what IP address is assigned to this machine, and you can simply browse to http colon slash slash localhost colon 5000 slash sample. Remember, because sample is the name of the endpoint we created in our service. I'm going to be browsing from a remote machine, so not the one where Flask is running. If you'll be doing this also, then you should check your IP address where Flask is running to know which IP you need to browse to. My Flask machine is running on 10.0.0.4, so I'm going to browse to 10.0.0.4 colon 5000 slash sample. Let's hit enter, and we get what we expect, a message that says Flask is running. Also, we can head back to our terminal where we started Flask, and we can see some logging information for the requests that came through. We can see which IP address browsed to the web service, what day and time it happened, what kind of request it was, in this case a GET request, which endpoint, we can see sample here, and the HTTP response code. Alright, so make sure you're up and running with Flask and that you can do everything we demoed in this video. If you happen to get any errors when you try to start Flask, then first look at the documentation link I've provided in the description to see if your error can be resolved by the steps mentioned there. In the next video, we're going to create another simple web service with Flask, but this time we'll actually be passing data to the service and having it return data back to us. To pass data to Flask, we'll also be building a front-end application in HTML and JavaScript. This will prepare us for the work we'll need to do to create the service in the front-end application we'll create to handle our predictions from VGG16 in a later video. Let me know in the comments if you're all set and ready to go, and I'll see you next time.